So what's the deal with all the brackets in Logseek Advanced Queries? I'm placing squirrely brackets, square brackets, parentheses. By the time I'm gonna place so many brackets, I'm a certified dentist. <laughs> right? Right. So you want to know Logseek Advanced Queries. And like me, you're constantly getting no results. So what I did was spend a couple of afternoons researching and learning the basics of Clojure to get a better understanding and then explain it to you. Of course, then the latest update hit and now they introduced using the single query syntax in advanced queries, making things much, much easier. That did require me to do another round of messing with code to change all my examples around so they include the simpler method. In this video, however, I'm not using those shortcuts because the goal is to teach you the foundation it's built upon. There will be a link in the description showing my notes and the queries side by side so you can see how it looks in advanced and how it looks with the simple syntax. I'm going to take you step by step through this detailed query. The goal of this query is to find all my to-dos inside journal pages that I didn't do in the last 180 days and that aren't already either scheduled or prioritized. I might even make that period shorter because if you're ignoring a task for months, well, you're probably better off forgetting about it anyway. Logseek needs to know we are talking an advanced query. So it's wrapped with a begin query and an end query line. Inside this outer block, a couple of curly brackets. You can quickly add this by typing the less than symbol and finding and selecting query. Because the basic framework is always needed, I usually skip them in my written examples. While it isn't required, I usually start with a title line. It's something we can do in simple queries right now and makes it clear what data we are looking at. While you can use full HTML tags here, it does weird things with the formatting, so I usually limit it to an emoji and some bold text. With title out of the way, we start with column query. This is the main query block. Everything that's part of the actual query will be within those square brackets that are following it. The first thing we need to do is tell the query what data we want to filter. So we use the column find and function pool to get the data and put it in variable B. You can use any name you like here, but in general, I use B for blocks and I use P when I'm gonna limit it to pages. The square bracket star tells the query to fetch all columns from the system. Each block has values like its contents, the properties, ID, much more, and we could specify them, but in most cases, just getting everything is much easier. So when in doubt, just use star to get everything. Technically, we now asked for all the blocks. That's not very useful and Logseek luckily doesn't give us that result. So let's try and filter the data down step by step until we have just what we need. First thing is getting all the active to-do blocks. To do so, I'm going to fetch market data from my blocks. Remember that we used find to pull the block data into B, and now I'm going to filter the block marker column from B and put it into marker. I have the value that I want to filter on in variable marker, and I want to see if it contains either to do or doing, but it could also be now or later or waiting, depends on what you use. So I'm using the function called contains question mark. Don't forget that question mark as that cost me plenty of headaches. I feed that one with a data set. It uses pound signal and curly brackets and you can make a list of options. In this case, I'm gonna use to do and doing. So that gets me just those two marker variables. This will give me all my active to do's, but I already know a couple that I don't need because they will show up in either my dedicated priority task list or pop up once I schedule them on time. So let's filter those out. I'm using the not function and that makes it a negative. Then I check if a to-do has a schedule. I do this by checking the B variable I fetched earlier and checking for block scheduled value. If it's set, we'll know it has a schedule and I remove it from the results. Then I repeat this, but now I'm checking if it has a priority. So I do the same thing, fetching the priority and checking if it's A. This pairs the list right down. I still get to-dos though from all over. Uh, I get it from regular pages and that might be packing list, project steps and the like. And as such, I'm going to filter for journal pages only. To do so, however, I don't need the to-do block that I have. I need to know what page that to-do block is on. So I fetch column block page from the variable B and put it into variable P. Now I have a variable B for block and a variable P for the page it's on. Now that we have that, it's gonna be trivial, so we're just gonna check if the page variable P 
is a journal page and that should filter out anything that isn't in my journal. Now I'm almost there. The only thing I want to do now is have to do's from a specific time. I don't want today as I already got that one open. And as I said earlier, I don't care about all to do's that I keep postponing anyway. So to get started, I extract the day from the page using the journal day column. This creates another variable called day that I can use to filter on time. If you paid close attention, you might have noticed that we skipped a line. It's called column in. This is a way for LogSeq to send information to the query. And in this case, I need two special variables, which day it is today and what day it was around 180 days ago. Then inside the query, I can use column in with the dollar sign to get the variables and put them into query variables. Then I can use start and today variable to query and compare that to the actual day of the page the to-do is on. I simply check if today is less than today and if it's more than 180 days ago, and that should result into a subset of to-dos that's specifically what I was searching for. And now I can reuse this to check if I'm missing anything every day. That was a long query. Hopefully it also made a good example. It could have been a lot shorter using the new simple query method, but those will be in the notes I have in the description down below. So be sure to check that. Let's dive into a couple of examples on how to write and debug these queries, things that I learned while I was making this video. Thing, syntax highlights and auto indent. If you start a code block in LogSeq using the free backticks and closure, you will get a code block that you can type in that makes it much easier to write these queries. While you will need to copy and paste this to get it to work, it does give you auto indents formatting and allows you to see quick typos. When writing queries, it's a pain to constantly step out of the query block, check the results, then try to get back in. Now, this will work in a pinch, but if you're writing something that's a bit bigger, I highly recommend opening the page in an external editor like Visual Studio Code, because next to the syntax highlight that you'll get, every time that you save it, it will be auto-loaded by LogSeq. And if you put these two things side by side, you can see the results while you're typing and have like a single Ctrl S command that you can do to check if your query is still working. Pretty neat. I really hope there's a better way and if so let me know in the comments down below but I had a hard time to get back into query editing once I've loaded it up. I don't know where to click in the table or the block view to get back there. So the workaround I use is I just add an empty line above it Click on that and then arrow key down to get straight into edit mode. Feeling a bit daring and really want to get like that under the hood look. Then you can press the alt key and select the developer tools. If you ever use developer tools in a browser, then you know what this looks like. If you switch to the console view, it will show you a running tally of the things LogSeq is doing under the hood and you can debug your queries. It isn't perfect. I wish it would show me a bit more data, but it helped me plenty of times to get like a weird syntax error and figure out where that was. And the last power tip, if you got a table view, but you don't like the order of the columns, then you can change them by opening the page in an external editor. I hope this becomes drag and drop at some point, but luckily I don't need to do it very often. Also, don't forget you can sort a table by just clicking on their headings. So there's more to talk about, like formatting the output so you can get averages and summarizing results. But that's a whole different topic and I really need a bit of time to dive into it for another couple of days to fully grasp the concept, as well as playing around with the awesome visualizer plugin. It will get here though, so be sure to subscribe and know when the video hits. That's it for this time. Remember, you're awesome, keep it up.